This is a tutorial for how to build a room in ProBuilder, or maybe two rooms in a hallway. We'll see where it goes. Either way, this is not going to be like a tutorial in the structured sense of a tutorial that is well thought out and planned. I'm just going to record my building a room and talk you through what I'm doing. I think Gabriel will probably do a better tutorial later. So first thing I'll do is create a cube and center it at zero. You don't have to center it at zero, I just like to. So I've got ProGrids in the project, which makes snapping super easy. Highly recommend it if you don't already have it. If you don't have ProGrids and don't want to buy it for whatever reason, uh, you can just hold control and snap. Uh, but that won't put you on the world grid, so if your transform is somewhere slightly off, it's going to make your vertices off, and it's a whole thing. I recommend ProGrids. Okay, so I've got uh, the basic size of my room laid out here. I selected all the faces just by selecting one face and double clicking, which selects all the faces, and then I flip the normals, which is Alt-N, or you can do it over here, it's the flip normals button. Okay. So if I turn lighting on, you'll notice that the two sides of the walls here are black. And that's because I've got the default directional light in the scene still. Uh, turning that off, I'm going to bring in a point light. I think point lights look nice. Obviously they're going to be a little more expensive. You have a ton of them all over the place and no ambient light. Uh, so maybe I will keep that directional light in there. Just tone it down. Yeah, that is pretty much what I want. I don't want something super heavy, but I want to be able to see the light. Okay. Crank that down. Make this bright enough to see everything. Okay, that's acceptable. Now, I want to run around the scene, so I've brought in the ultimate first-person character controller. Um, highly recommend UFPS. It's a really well-written well, really well package. Okay, so I've got my, my guy in the scene. I've got a scene to run around in and something to illuminate that scene. So, playing. There we go. First first room done. It's like half of the work to an FPS right there. Okay, uh, so let's make this a little more interesting. Um, how about a door? Doors are important for, you know, traversing rooms. I've selected an edge, and then I hit the Alt-R shortcut, which is the shortcut for edge ring. So that just selects this ring of edges here. And then I'll connect to those edges using the Alt-E shortcut, which is also over here under just connect. So if you were to do this with a menu, it would just be um, ring, connect. Or you could even save a step and just do insert loop. Okay, so if you haven't already guessed, I want my door to be right about here. So I'm doing the same process, selecting an edge ring, cutting those edges, and then bring that up. So that's kind of wide. Let's make that shorter. So selecting that edge. Now I want to select the edge loop. And let's make that about two meters wide. Double clicking an edge will also select the edge loop. Uh, and ProGrids is really, or sorry, not ProGrids, ProBuilder has a default texture that has this handy one meter layout here, so I know exactly how much I'm, how much space I'm working with. So in this case, I want the door to be two by three. Well, let's make it a little more than three. Yeah, it's a tall door. Now I'm holding the Shift key. I have a face selected and I'm just going to push out. So this is a really quick way to extrude a face. And I've got a little hallway right there. 
but I don't want a hallway. I just want to make another room. So I'm going to extrude again, bringing it out, and I'm going to select both of these faces, holding shift again, extrude, and this will be slightly smaller than the previous room. Okay, so selecting these faces and extruding again, holding shift. I'm going to hold the V key and snap it to the height of the previous room. So it works the same way that Unity's V key works. Um, if you have faces selected and are moving them around, if you hold the V key, it will snap to wherever your nearest ver the nearest vertex to the cursor is. So in this case, it's over there. But if I had it over here, it would snap to that. You get the idea. OK, cool. So let's bring that light over there. Duplicate, bring it over. And we'll make this room red, just so you can tell we're in a different room. It's pretty easy to get lost when they're all that uniform gray box. Going through the door. It looks pretty good. It looks like a room with a red light. Okay, jumping out of the project again. Let's make something a little more interesting. How about a window? Let's do a window. Yeah, windows are great. All right, so going back into edge mode, I am just hitting the H key to toggle quickly between the edge modes. Uh, you could also go up here, and that's an easy way to move through the different modes. So I want my edge, or my window, somewhere right in the middle here. So I'm just going to move this edge out of the way. And I'm not going to make edge loops, which is messy, but I don't think it matters all that much. Oh, and there we go. That's an old Pro Builder bug there. Those long, thin faces always seem to do that. I'll fix that one of these days. You know what? Let's just delete that. And I'll show you another handy trick for getting rid of some triangles. I'm holding the V key again, so I'm snapping the edge right up to the top there, swapping into vertex mode, and selecting both these vertices, and hitting weld. So what that did was just welded these two vertices up here to the top ones on the right corner here. So now these are all the same face. OK. There we go. Now we can quickly and easily connect those faces. And I'm holding Shift while dragging inward on the extrude. So if you're following along at home, I had a face selected. Hit the R key to swap into the scale mode. And while holding shift, I grabbed the center of this and dragged in, which scales inward on the x and y axis here and creates new faces around it. OK, so I'm going to undo that because I don't want that window there. OK, so here's my window. I can move it around. I think I liked it where it was. That was actually a pretty good placement. Now, I just so happen to know that my window textures are skinny and long. Let's find one of those. 